Hi, I'm Mark Hilton from Santa Cruz Software. I'm going to be going through a series of demos highlighting Santa Cruz Software's two products, Linker UI. Linker UI is a connector to connect the Adobe Creative Cloud apps, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop to the Adobe Experience Manager, AEM. Linker UI treats all three of these Adobe applications completely equal. Um, you make a change, you check out an asset from AEM in Photoshop, make a change to it, uh, check it back in, have add that to an InDesign document, um, check that back in, somebody changes an Illustrator file that's part of a layer in Photoshop, they through Illustrator check that back in. Um, the Photoshop file can be updated and the InDesign file can be updated. Um, this is all uh, transparent and again works across all three Adobe applications equally. Second demo we're going to be doing is wrapping all of that up, all of that workflow up that I'm going to show you in the first demo to then introduce the concept of editable dynamic templates in AEM. So essentially an InDesign document with a very easy non-technical interface built right into AEM so that you can give to your field sales and marketing people the ability to create editable content for their local region, but all within branded guidelines that are set up by your marketing team, your branding team, and the your graphic designers. With looking into AEM. Log in, browsed through our asset files. Can be working in this folder called Marcom Services. And then within that folder, there's a number of other folders. The folder we're going to be using mostly is C21. So in here, you can see that there is a InDesign file, INDD. There is a PSD file and some PNGs. Um, could be uh, .ai files, uh, doesn't really matter. These are the files we're gonna be working with. Let's go to, to InDesign. So here we have Linker UI. This is the same folder structure that we just reviewed in AEM. Here's the Marcom services folder. Click on that. Here's the Century 21 folder. Also the logos, headshots. So I can browse the folder structure inside Linker UI just as if I was in AEM itself. I could also search for objects um, just like I could search in AEM. So if I wanted to search for a folder, I could search for a folder and then go right directly to that. We're gonna be working with this particular InDesign document here. It happens to be a real estate brochure and you can see it's kind of boring. There's only, you know, it's a white background. And so there actually is a much more interesting background. It happens to be a PSD file. And I'm going to go ahead and place it. There we go, much more interesting. Um, it has a nice background and frames the photographs really nicely. Okay, so. What I want to do is save this. Now I have two choices. I can either upload a whole new asset, so there'll be another asset sitting next to, to this one, or I can just update the current asset, which is what I'm going to do. So basically I'm going to update it, create a new version, and upload it to AEM. So to do that, I'm going to press a local save. And you can see here there's now a red triangle in the upper left corner of this thumbnail. That just tells me that the asset that I have now locally saved is different and is out of sync with the that asset that's stored up in the uh, AEM. Now I can continue to do these saves. You know, you know, it might take me an hour to start a new document or download an existing document and make changes to it. 
and I can continue to do local saves. I don't have to go back to AEM every time. I just, when I'm ready to update the the final, you know, version back up in the uh, in AEM, I can just then click update. And it goes through the process of now sending the asset back up to AEM, updating that version in AEM, and um, being ready for somebody else to use it. So let's flip back over to AEM and see what we can see. So this hasn't been refreshed. There's the original document. So if I just refresh my browser, there you go. There's the updated InDesign document with the, the background. Now you see there's this, here's the background that we placed and uh, the next step of this demonstration is going to be the Photoshop user is going to be um, told that they need to change the logo that uh, Century 21 has a new logo and it's going to be this one here. And so that Photoshop user is going to update the background so that anytime that background is used in any documents, it will now have the current um, logo. Let's go back to InDesign. You can see this still has the old, old thumbnail. Let's just refresh Linkery Y, and there you go. There's the, the new asset. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and flip to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Uh, here's the same folder structure, Marcom Services, Century 21, and there you are. Now, one thing is you'll notice is that when we were in InDesign, we had five assets here. That's because Photoshop doesn't recognize an InDesign document. Photoshop can't open an InDesign document. It can't place an InDesign document. So Linker UI only displays relevant content for the Adobe application that it's um, currently being used in. So in this case, we're going to now open up the background. I'm going to go to the layers panel, get rid of that old logo. I'm going to place the new logo, obviously too big. So I'm going to resize it, reposition it, place it. And again, I, if I was doing more work, I could just continue to do more work. Um, I can do a local save whenever I want. I'm again, not talking to AEM yet, other than Linker UI knows that there's now a difference between the local file and the uh, asset up in uh, AEM. So again, I could choose to create a whole new asset, upload a whole new asset, or I can update the current one, which is what I'm going to do. It's going through again the process of uh, transferring the image back to AEM. The uh, triangle goes away. And let's flip back to AEM. There's the old asset. Let's. And there we go. There's the new background. All right. Let's flip back to Photoshop, close, there's the updated logo. Uh, let's close that asset, flip to InDesign. Uh, let's refresh InDesign's view of the world and you can see there's the new background. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to open up this InDesign document which has the old asset in it. Now. In Linker UI's preferences, we have a number of choices that we can um, use. So link updates, do an auto update, prompt or do nothing. So in this case, uh, we want the, that it to be prompt. We want to give the designer the option. Uh, if we don't want to give the designer the option, then this would be set as auto update. Okay, so. Um, we're going to go ahead and open this. And so 
first thing that happens is issue with links. This document contains links to a source that have been missing, is missing or modified. So it says here it's a modified link. So let's update that modified link. And there we are. We have now updated the InDesign document. Uh, as an InDesign user, I'm gonna go ahead and then locally save it because now of course I want this template to be um, available with the updated document. And of course the purpose of this whole process that we've been going through in terms of this demonstration is now I want to turn this document into something that's editable by agents who are not designers. I want to give them a very restricted set of objects that they can edit so that they can create their own brochures. We're going to do that next.